I was just a kid from Bolton. <laughs> they got handpicked to travel the world. It was absolutely incredible. <laughs> Being on stage for me was where I felt most at home, actually. I got to achieve everything that I dreamed of and then had a beautiful family. Life was going the way it was supposed to go. The future looked fantastic. And then suddenly, everything changed. The wanted star, Tom Parker, has told fans that he's been diagnosed with terminal and inoperable brain cancer. We're gonna light these candles for Mummy's birthday. Are you looking forward to this cake, Gray? Yeah. Yeah. I think Aurelia might be looking forward to the cake. That looks good, doesn't it, eh? Yeah. Tom Parker lives in Kent with his wife, Kelsey. Wow! And their two children, Aurelia and Baldy. Do you wanna blow them out? Yeah. Oh. We blew them yeah. out. Don't touch, don't touch. In October last year, the Parker family were told that Tom has an inoperable brain tumour. I've got everything I wanted. I've got money, I've got fame. I own a lovely house, got a beautiful wife, amazing kids. Mm. So I'm very proud of where I've got to in my life, to be honest. I mean, what, what more do you need? This time a year ago, life was fairly normal. We only had one child at this point, no health problems. And then there was a certain time where I started saying to Kelsey, I don't feel right and I couldn't quite put my finger on it. So we went to Norfolk and we was in this cottage right on the river. And it was just a really lovely, lovely holiday. But I remember Tom just being really sharp, like just quite like snappy about things. Tom's not like that as a person. I took a radio upstairs and Tom was laying on the bed. He didn't look right and he said, oh, I just feel really sick. And then he goes, Kels, my hands are really sweaty. And then, literally, within seconds, he was then having this seizure. He just literally seized up. I was just, like, in such a, a panic. The paramedics turned up. When they checked him over, they said, yeah, we're going to take him in, but don't pack loads of stuff, cos he'll be out in uh, about four hours. I could not stop shaking. Cos, obviously, I knew something was wrong but I didn't know what it was going to be and how bad it was going to be. Because of the COVID situation, I was just on my own in Norwich Hospital. And they came in, pulled the curtain around, so you've got a brain tumour. I can't have. You've got to have made a mistake. I'm 32 years old, and it was. I just couldn't believe it. It just almost was like a horror film. We think it's a tumour. Then from a tumour to it being the worst tumour you could possibly ever have, and very difficult to to come to terms with, really. I just remember just shutting down. I think scared is probably an understatement, to say the least. Yeah, I was absolutely petrified. Can we just stop it? Do you know what it was? I, couldn't, I just couldn't stop thinking about death is the honest truth. Nobody would blame him for lying down and never getting up, you know? But he has. He just took charge of it all again. And, you know, that determination, that tenacity, really, to, you know, to, to deal with things. 
Tom has a glioblastoma multiform, the most aggressive type of brain cancer. Since being diagnosed, he's been having intensive chemo and radiotherapy. And you're not going to wear that hat the whole time when we film you every single day? Well, I'll take it off then. Oh, there we go then. Got to embrace the bald. Yeah, but I know what you're Life's like. Life-spoken. No, because you literally wear that hat as a comfort every day. Yeah, well, you're right. I am always right. The cancer has definitely affected my short-term memory, my walking and my... Even lifting my arm has been a bit of a... Uh, bit of a challenge, to be honest. Yeah, I, d I think... Um... Sorry, mate, I fucking completely forgot the question. That's fine. I, I was just saying, what does it feel like living with cancer? Oh. There is your answer. Just the short-term memory is terrible. I'm like, oh, what was I saying? Yeah, it drives me insane. The leg started to come back a little bit, the strength, but this is still... Yeah, you've seen me doing this every now and again. You know why. Yes, to use the hand. <sighs> but that is so much better. Look how good that one is. It's that one, do Yeah, where he held his arm, he just stopped using it. And when you go to him, use that arm, he goes, I wouldn't use it for that, would I? I wouldn't use it for that. All right, stop doing me up on camera, <laughs> fuck, you know? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> What's with my wife? <laughs> I feel like we've come on in terms of accepting. Yeah, but I feel like you have to be practical in situations like this. Well, this is your life now, and you just have to deal with it. You have accepted it now. Well... I spent three months of last year just laying in that bed. There was just so much to contend with. You're not just dealing with cancer, you're dealing with how are people going to treat you. There's so much running through your mind. I don't want people to treat me differently because I've got something. I think that was always on my mind. I do feel like I'm in like a much stronger place, but just... I don't know, it's like just, it's so hard to, like, think about the future, do you know what I mean? Because I don't know, I don't I genuinely don't know what it holds at the moment. <laughs> the last three months for our family has just been horrendous. But it's just been so hard watching my husband go through this. You just want to be there for him and do it for him. Incy wincy spy that climbed up the wall to spout. I feel like he's slowly becoming himself again. But it's just going to take a bit of time for this Tom to digest everything that's happened to him. My, my Tom will, will come back. And what else are you going to have? Blueberries. And I feel like I've really dug in over the last like few months to like get myself back up to a bit more of a level playing field, just mentally, physically. And it's easy just to, you know, just sink down and just go, I'm just gonna lie here and die. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe I was put here for a reason. And that reason to me is in terms of glioblastoma itself, I'd love to raise more awareness about it. I think the next six months, whatever happens to me, if it can have a positive effect on the treatment of glioblastoma, then that's a good thing, right? Seven years ago, Tom was in a boy band called The Wanted. Selling 12 million records worldwide and achieving 10 UK top 10 singles. Nervous. Hi. Couldn't just about to play in front of 75,000 people, surprisingly. Now, Tom wants to try and make a difference for brain tumour patients like him. So he's made the difficult decision to step back into his former life. We are putting together a charity concert to raise awareness for brain tumours and specifically glioblastoma. 
young people are dying of this disease. So I've got this platform and I want to do this concert to try and use it as beneficially as possible. Tom is planning to bring together some of the biggest artists in the UK for a concert in aid of Stand Up To Cancer in the hope of raising awareness about brain tumours and funding for vital research. Tom wants to perform at the concert, but getting back on stage despite his condition will be his biggest challenge since being diagnosed. That person that I was when I was in the band is so different to the man that I am now. My whole life has been consumed with cancer. Manchester, peace out! If we can make a concert happen, it'll be like a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. You either sink or swim in situations like this. There's a time when you need to flick that switch and be like, OK, I need to turn it on now, I need to pull myself together.